Hello there, willing participants. I am Pruitt, and this is Jim Davis. Now at your table, fireballs might make you gag, and you may not be into thorn whips, but you don't have to be a Dorian about this because it's not Fifty Shades of Greyhawk. So with your willing, participate, fuck, enthusiastic consent. Words are betrayers. <laughs> Those letters, Those they're little, slippery bastards. Those deceitful letters. Sliding out of order in my head. <clears throat> so with your enthusiastic consent, we will start this show on social contracts here on WebDM. Okay, Jim. I gotta talk to you about something. Oh? I gotta talk to you about our social contract. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, what is it, and why do we need one? Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we see Rousseau uh, coined the term social contract, but I do believe it was Hobbes that first articulated mm. the idea. The gaming philosophy, right? Jim so and Prue. The social contract is a term from a political and sort of moral philosophy. You can apply the concept to nearly any gathering of of people doing anything together. Yeah, it gets brought up in. Uh, in RPG circles, if I'm not mistaken, I, I do think that it really starts getting brought up with the Forge and Ron Edwards essays and the GNS model. And you start seeing things like social contract. What what are the unspoken or informal rules of play that that, that govern how a table you know plays the game? And it it was one of those concepts that when I came across it, it really resonated with me because. I, at that point, I really was just playing with one group of people, right? right? It was you guys and, and, and you know, my wife and my brother and, and longtime friends. And so I started to think about things like, I, you know, if I was mad that, that a bunch of people had uh, canceled. Or, di or no shows, right? Yeah. yeah. That, I, Which, you, that happens. It happens, yeah. Like, what in the world is going on? You know, why, I, you know, I'd be very frustrated and mad. And then it took me really running across this, this concept before I realized, like, there are rules that we have for the games that we play that are not articulated anywhere, mm -hmm. they're not written down anywhere, they are just the informal uh, agreement that you kind of reach when something happens and no one says anything, you know, and so use an example of, of let's say, someone arriving late. If I never say anything as a DM, and I, and I didn't used to because I was like, I don't want to call them out and, you know, I don't, don't want to do that to my friends. But at the same time, I'm like, I prepared and I'm frustrated. Yeah. I thought we were going to play. And, and we all agreed we're going to meet at 2 o'clock on Sunday. Like right. We meet every Sunday like at Like we meet every Sunday at 2 o'clock, yeah. And so I, it took moments like that before I realized, like, okay, that, that number one, you do need to speak up in those moments, that it's yeah. okay to just, and you don't have to be like confrontational or, or, or you know, aggressive about it. You can just say like, hey, I, you know, I thought you were gonna be here. If you're not, and it's fine, this is 100% voluntary experience. No one should ever feel like they have to play a game. Yeah. Uh, if you're not feeling it, if you're sick, had a bad day, don't wanna be there, just don't feel like being around other people, then do not play the game. Please, by all means, do not, you know. Well, yeah, <laughs> like, I mean. Take, take time for you, man. Uh, yeah, cause bad D&D, you know, you might as well not play D&D. Sure. It's not, yeah, yeah it's know. not worth it. It took me a while to sort of realize that in this one particular instance that, you know, what I wanted out of out of the players was not, I was not communicating that to, to them. And I was not communicating when I was like, well, I, I'm, you know, disappointed that we didn't get to play, and I'm disappointed number one because it's a missed opportunity. But you know, at that time in my gaming life, I was spending a lot of time prepping, and right. so it's like if I spent 12 hours prepping, which at that time was not unreasonable, I'd feel like, well, you know, I, all this time was wasted and blah blah mm -hmm. blah and whatever. And it just it led to a lot of feelings of uh, you know resentment and, and anger, and I was like, I don't want to feel that way about my friends. Right. You know. Time out. Yes. We got three minutes into that episode, and I'm sitting here like the door's open and the fan's on. Anyway. So that was sort of my first encounter with the social contract, and it got me thinking about those informal things that we have as, as groups that we play with, and, and whether or not some of those things can be made formal and explicit, and whether or not some of those things stay informal and implied, and, and that's okay. And this could be everything from, what do you do when a die rolls in the crack of your book, <laughs> and you might need to re-roll, yeah. 
to how do we bring in a new player that's going to join the game, to what do we do about highly charged and, and sensitive uh, elements that we might want to include in our game. These could be anything from, from torture, sexual assault, uh, things that, that you might not, you don't want because it's like, oh, I can't wait to get into this, but it might be appropriate for the game that you're running. Yeah, for the, yeah it might be setting appropriate. Yeah, you know? and, and, and those are things where you, you want to be very careful because you don't know where other people's boundaries are yet particularly if you don't like know them really well and people's boundaries shift all the time what they are comfortable with uncomfortable with uh, what they're willing to tolerate from one person might not be the same case from another person if all of that is implicit and, and you're just sort of playing your game without really worrying about all of that until you run headlong into one of these things now you've got a whole situation to deal with you run the risk of of, of alienating a friend uh, of there being friendships and relationships that are damaged uh, a, a hobby that you don't get to engage in anymore and i found that that you know, you don't have. To, I'm not talking about a, a contract, contract like a piece of paper contract. Yeah, and everybody I, signs it, pricks their thumb. No, 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 a no. Blood print. I'm talking about a conversation yeah. that you have with your group. Let me rephrase: a conversation that the group has together. Yeah. Because this is this is pre-game. This is not the dungeon master and the players. This is however many people you are playing with sitting down as people and talking about what they want out of the game. What kind of environment do they want to create that will allow them to have the kind of experience that they want to have? This is maybe kind of conflated with a session zero. It can well, be combined was, with Yeah, that, I was right? gonna say, it certainly seems like the perfect thing to have during a session zero. I mean, yeah. of course you wanna talk about the characters you're creating and oh, all yeah, that, yeah. but when you're talking about playing a game with a group of people, like you said, you wanna know, I mean, are we rolling on books if it rolls off the book? Because you, know, <laughs> right, yeah. you have certain people that do that kind of thing. They're like, oh no, if it rolls off the book, I always re-roll. Until there's that time they roll a 20 off the book and they just pick it up. Uh -huh, right? uh -huh. like, yeah, you're sure. going to want to talk about that, right? You're going to want to talk about that. The social contract, in another sense, as we're getting into the, the, the details of it, is uh, don't be a dick. Explained. From the beginning, we yeah. have, we've had a, a philosophy, and it's not uniquely web DMs. The, right. it, this is found online in a great many number of places, and I encountered it, in, and I think maybe RPGNet, well before WebDM was formed. But it is a philosophy that expressed in the motto, don't be a dick. And there is a lot going on in there. I personally have, have received some feedback from some of our viewers who say that like that don't be a dick motto hides a lot of stuff and, and, and means that we don't really dig into uh, certain problem behaviors or certain uh, relationships that might come out from, from playing the game that, that some people have difficulty with. So what it covers is so extensive that to talk about it all well, would be, would be a, a big undertaking. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like the golden rule. Sure. Right? Like, yeah. in, like in, in some ways, yeah, it's like, the opposite of the... Well, yeah. it's an opposite, but it's telling you the same thing right. as the golden rule. And, and to me, I've always been of the mind of like, well, if you just follow the golden rule, do you need all those other rules? Or yeah, aren't yeah, they kind of like random. implied under the umbrella of this, you know, treat others like you want to be treated? Yeah, yeah, sure. You so know what we, I mean? where we want to do a show on like New versus Old Testament uh, law and uh, jurisprudence. I mean, we, we, we could get into it. We could, we could certainly piss off a Folks, lot of people. Folks, we're switching the focus here of WebDM to be a theological uh, Judeo Christian. Uh, no, if, you talk, if you talk back to your parents, they can sell you into slavery. So, well, Pruitt's had a very unique upbringing. <laughs> uh, so it's it's this agreement. It's either formal or informal. Yeah. Uh, but it is an agreement between all the participants of a game and, and not just the DM handing over a packet of rules and this is how we're going to do things. Yeah. There is overlap, right? Particularly if your social contract includes how you will interact with the mechanics of a game, which it might not, right? But it, it, it could. If it does touch on the mechanics of a game, for instance, a part of that might be like, we always roll 46, drop the lowest. That's that's part of our shtick. Doesn't matter what we're playing, what, what, what what's going on. We know that that's a baseline. I can start a character immediately. Mm -hmm. um, that, that could be an example of that. But it's not the DM showing up and saying like, here, I need everybody to sign this. I got a notary uh, and, and we're gonna, <laughs> you're going to obey me. And then these are my rules. Mm -hmm. No, this is a conversation that everyone gets to participate in. And everyone uh, should be heard and, and given a chance to speak because what they're doing is voicing their concerns, voicing their wants, voicing their hopes, voicing what, what they want out of the experience of playing so that they will have a good time. Right. And we've said it on here before and, and I, I stick by it. I am firmly of the belief that it is better to, to get these things out in the open in the beginning 
than to blunder into them during play and, and risk mishandling that blunder. Yeah. I'm speaking from personal experience here where you say something or do something that, that deeply offends or upsets someone and it's you know, difficult to walk back the feeling of defensiveness. No, I didn't mean to do that. What are you talking about? Don't be so hurt. You know, mm -hmm. you know then you feel like, oh, I'm so sorry. What can I do to, to fix it? And, and there's all these missed opportunities or, or chances for there to be miscommunication and getting these things out of the way first, even this is not the only time you're going to talk, uh, but it is a formative conversation that you can have for your group, whether it's a con game that you're <laughs> that you're only going to play with people once, right. or it's uh, a, a group of people that you intend to play with as long as you can keep this thing going. Uh, having a period of time before you start playing to just say, "Hey, here's some here's some ground rules. Here's some uh, you know some things that I'd like for us to observe. Does anyone else have anything to say? You know, as a DM, you can take the lead in it, but you shouldn't see it as a like a lecture. It's a conversation you're all having. Yeah, it's it's a it's a cooperative thing because I mean everybody should should put forth you know anything that maybe they they've experienced in their past yeah. uh, in gaming. You know, like yeah. they should bring I you know things to the table for the social contract if it's a if it's certain like a pet peeve or a thing uh, you know like oh I don't uh, you know please don't eat this in front of me. Sure. Or, please don't, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Especially if it's if it, if the host's house, you yeah. know. Yeah. There, there could be a lot of faux pas that you might want to cover. The social contract is is an acknowledgement and uh, of the fact that regardless of the elves and the magic and the dragon and the lasers and the whatever else that that are in the games that we're playing you are in interacting with and sharing an experience with other human beings and they deserve to be treated as such. Yeah. And, and they deserve your, at the very least, <laughs> some attention in the beginning as you listen to them as they tell you what they find appropriate and inappropriate in terms of behavior so that they can enjoy the game as much as you are going to enjoy the game. And, and I suppose down at the heart of it, the social contract is really about, or, or I should say, a fair social contract and one that's conscientious is about making sure that one person's enjoyment of the game is not placed above others uh, as a, a, you know, in terms of priority and that everyone one is at least you know, giving consideration and a, and a fair effort made to accommodate them. But disclaimer, there probably will be things that maybe come out in a social contract conversation that are deal breakers. And it's a good time then to leave, as opposed to 20 sessions later, everyone's invested and, and emotions are running high and then things get heated and you encounter something that's just like a brick wall for you and, and the whole thing comes to a screeching halt and now pieces have to be picked up and uh, you know maybe someone's seat has to be filled or something. Getting this out in the open is, is a good way to avoid uh, some of those situations. I mean, not entirely, they'll still happen, but it, it's a good way to, uh, to get, head a lot of them off before they become issues. Right, because that, that mountain that might be uh, impassable is in the distance. If you see it in the distance, it's really small. You can just, it's a speed bump and you can move it out of the way. You know, right. It's all a matter of perspective, really. I kind of break them down into four, maybe five broad categories. Um, and again, not every group is uh, different. It shouldn't be a, uh, come as a surprise to say that, but it does mean that not everything we talk about is going to be appropriate. It might mean we leave things out that, that you wish we'd talked about. So this is one of those things where if you plan on being explicit about uh, the social contract that is a part of your game, and make no mistake, there is a social contract in your game. Are you guys together playing? Even if it's just bare minimum, I'm not going to talk over someone else. I'm not going to punch someone I disagree with. <laughs> like, yeah, those I'm, are. <laughs> I'm not going to get pissed off and throw my dice across the room just because I didn't get that magic item I wanted. Right, 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 right. Uh, you know, yeah. But some people, you know, they have to go through that kind of thing before they realize it's inappropriate. Uh, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Am I going to do the pick up die really quick thing? It's Roll things it. like oh, that. Yep, that was a 20. Yep, yep, yep. Don't, let, don't worry about it. Uh, keep your hub your hand over the dice uh, so nobody else can see it. But, and to take a step back for a minute, you know, again, we've said before on WebDM, we're not sociologists, we're not psychologists, we're not specially trained. We've just loved the game a lot and, and, and hope that everybody has a good time playing it. And so, you know, just sharing our experiences in this way, it, it's, there are some people who react to these sort of explicit uh, agreements between people very strongly. They sort of feel like, why do we need to be, why do we need to say things? Isn't it possible to just, you know, not say anything at all? And, and mm -hmm. people know what to do. And maybe that works for some groups. And maybe the conditions under which not being explicit about what your social contract is can work for a while. But having listened to other people's experiences playing the game for as long as I've been online, uh, it, yeah. there are so many horror stories that I have read from people who, who play with just manipulative, uh, selfish people who, whose 
priorities of the game are different and they take that personally and make it personal. Yep. Um, for, for people who uh, you know think that they are owed something in the experience of playing the game, that they're entitled to a certain experience or entitled to a certain uh, anything in a completely voluntary luxury recreational activity. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's all of those things are um, difficult and if they are if if those form the bulk of your experiences playing the game or they form the the first formative experiences playing the game then you might just be like no i, I don't want to play in a hobby full of a bunch of selfish self-absorbed people who don't really care what my experience of it is like right and that, yeah. i mean and that's unfortunate because i mean the vast majority of my gaming experiences have been overwhelmingly positive. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Have there been some shitty sessions? Yes. Have mm -hmm. there been some shitty sessions with randos? Sure. Yes. Have there been shitty sessions with my friends? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. But after the fact, we usually have a conversation. You talk about somebody it, yeah. does and be like, listen. Yeah. Yes. This this isn't cool. This isn't cool. This you isn't know? cool. Yeah. And so like the main categories that I can identify are things like session logistics. Yeah. Um, th so that's one. The other is DM and player expectations. Mm -hmm. what, what do we sort of expect from each other? The third one is sort of what are the appropriate and inappropriate interpersonal behaviors that might be deal breakers for you, or at the very least you might want someone to know about because you're hoping it will inform their decision on, on how they act. And then uh, open communication is just sort of a blanket uh, miscellaneous category. Sometimes we might want to venture into actual game mechanics. Yeah. This is especially true if you're one of those one system groups. You got your system. Yeah. You you know you're not going to deviate from it. You you know that every person in the group who who runs the game runs this system. And so now you might branch out and say, well, because th this the the question of system is always answered. You know, we might say like, all right, well, how do we handle X Y Z? What kind of material do we use? Do we use house rules, homebrew material? Right, right. You know, play test material. Right. Yeah. That can be yeah. part of a, a social contract. And, yeah. You know. Especially those one system groups. You know, you might have those 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 fun campaigns where it's like all elves or no elves. <laughs> Sure, or all sure. this, or all rocket launchers, first kill, you know, <laughs> first blood. Right. You know, I mean, that's all, that's all kind of part of it. Um, yeah. Going back to your first uh, element there. Uh, with session things, logistics. Ses mm -hmm. Session logistics. That's usually the biggest problem, in, oh my, God. in my opinion. Oh, God, yeah. It's like trying to find that one day yep. at that one time. Yep. Everybody got this three-hour block free? Yep. Yes? Yep. Okay. We're good? Yep. We're, We're good. doing this. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Sundays? <laughs> two to six. <laughs> yeah. Right. And and it was it took us ten years or more, it seemed, to finally get a day mm -hmm. when all five of us and, and this was after our group had been winnowed down from like nine players to a solid four, that we were finally like, All right, this is our day. And I was able as as the DM to go like, All right guys, let's just always assume Sunday at two. You don't have to call. You don't have to text. You don't have to do anything. We will be ready unless we tell you otherwise. Right. Because for years we would play and there would be, you know, the group text or, or, or just individual ones. Hey, are we playing this week? Well, did I say we weren't? You know? Yeah. And in my mind, I was, I'm, I'm, I love role playing. I've always wanted to do it. I would play it every day if my life allowed it. Uh, my life, not my wife. She would play as well. Uh, <laughs> Jim, you're not playing this week. It's our anniversary. <laughs> And I think we probably play on our anniversary. Uh, you get enough of them after a while. It's uh... <laughs> <laughs> you could also buy each other dice. Uh, it, it took me a while to to get to that point where I could say uh, you should assume that we are playing uh, unless we say otherwise. And even then, we you know people would you know they not feel it. They don't want to go. They mm -hmm. don't want to do it. And I found that my frustration and my uh, and eventually my anger with it subsided once I was able to learn how to be like this is what I expect. That also was accompanied with a, a reassurance to my good friends, who at the time were my group, that if they don't feel like playing, please don't play. Like, I do not want you here if you're tired, sick, had a shitty day at work and want to be by yourself, mm -hmm. have too much to do this week and need to prepare, uh, just don't want to be around people. So session logistics are, are, are big big thing making sure that you've got the the time to play making sure everybody can commit to the same time and day and place this is why when you start a campaign you want to be extra clear like these are the days this is the time here's how long i expect us to be playing right both in session and 
over a period of weeks. The potential players for your game can look and go, well, I, you know, I can commit to three months, but after that school starts again and yeah. I don't know what my schedule is going to be like. Being upfront about that, as opposed to just saying like, hey guys, you want to play, you know, the newest uh, adventure from uh, D&D? And then just kind of, you know, waffling along, doing nothing. Oh, when were we supposed to play again? Oh, I guess we can do these times. And particularly if you're a Dungeon Master host. Not everyone is. I, I like it because that's where all my books were. But if you are a Dungeon Master host, then, then you can take the lead in that. We're going to play at my place. Here's what you should do if you're going to be late. Here's what you should do if you're going to be absent. You know, and this is, again a group conversation, not dictated from on high. If the host house has pets or children, what, what are the expectations there? Are, you know, are drugs allowed at the table of all sorts? Um, mm -hmm. are, is food allowed? And if so, is food allowed? Are you expected to contribute or bring something? Maybe you just bring five bucks and mm -hmm. you know, it all gets put together. Maybe it's potluck style. Yeah. Um, all of those things are potential topics for these sort of session logistics. You know, do you take your shoes off when you go in the house? Which bathroom should you use? Uh, you know, if you're brand new, it's a new group, you've never played together, or, or you're joining a new group, someone just sitting down and going like, hey, here's what we expect, mm -hmm. can, be a real big, can be a real big help. And, and it's kind of where I would start with, uh, with a, a social contract conversation. Just be like, hey, let's cover just some of the basics. Um, you know, is it all right if we have phones out at the table? Does anybody care? You know, is, is it gonna distract anyone? Does anyone need their phone out at the table because they have a job that they might need to get uh, messages from because they have a spouse that they mm -hmm. might need to get or a significant other, you know, something like that. Or uh, something as simple as, I use D&D Beyond. I use D&D Beyond. And it's that, on my phone. It's right That's my, why my I have sheet. my phone out. Yes. Like, just like letting people know, because that can put some people off. It can put some people off. Or I, I play an evoker, and I roll a lot of dice, and I would just rather use a dice rolling app yeah. for that. This particular point, cell phones uh, mm -hmm. at, at, at the table, seems to be a big sticking point for a lot of people. And uh, you know, I, I don't know what their experiences are like. But judging by their reactions, it seems like their experiences are really bad. Like, they're really bothered by others looking at their phone or, or it being distracting. I think this is one of those things where I'm just different. I've, I've never really been that bothered by it. And so I, you know, as long as someone's not like <laughs> flashing their phone in my face or had the sound turned on and are playing yeah, a real play, noisy a game, game or something. <laughs> yeah. But if someone's just like quietly on their phone while other people are doing something that can, that's got my attention, like what do I care if Person. Anyway, but session logistics are, are things sort of like that. Uh, you know, just what's how do how does this look in practice? Uh, what's expected of me as a guest in a house or a participant in a game? Um, and then from there, you kind of go on to more uh, specific like behaviors and expectations and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Table cross talk. And cross talk. Uh, you know, whether how how much you should or shouldn't meta game. What constitutes meta gaming for the group? Uh, any die rolling conventions the, mm -hmm. that you know, what happens if it rolls off the table, rolls off a book, rolls in a crack, rolls in the seam of a nice brand new awesome custom table. <laughs> I'm sorry, but those ki those kids in Stranger Things should have re-rolled that off the table <laughs> across the floor. Yeah, yeah re-roll re yeah, it re -roll. And, and quit rolling to hit with fireball. Sorry, uh, right. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I don't need to. <laughs> Maybe we're playing Fourth Edition. Did you <laughs> roll to hit with Fireball in Fourth Edition? Well, you rolled to overcome their dexterity defense. Oh, that's right. right. That's right. Yeah, and no, then they weren't the, playing Fourth Edition. No, they weren't playing Fourth Edition. Yeah. Those are some of the things about DM or player expectations, but it could uh, cover more things like what level of of player agency is expected from the players. Does the game master expect that the players will really take the lead and, and have strong motivations and will seek out adventure and not shirk away from it or or, or just stand around doing doing nothing. That's probably another one that, that I get asked about a lot is DMs who, who have players that just do nothing. <laughs> they just sit there. Until the wizard says, go to that mountain and get me that thing and bring it back. Sure, and maybe that's what you need uh, for a new group of players who've never done this before, uh, especially if they're young and, and are not used to making decisions in their own life. It's difficult to kind of ask them to make decisions in this if they're not used to it, uh, although they can get there. What comfort level should we expect from uh, the table? Are we looking to be pushed in certain ways? Is the game that we're playing designed to push our boundaries and to get us thinking about things that, that are maybe a little uncomfortable? Yeah. Or is this a beer and pretzels, uh, end of the work week, get together and have fun sort of game? Or, yeah. I mean, not that they can't be both. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, because, well, I mean, there are certain, there, I mean, there's a difference between, like, say, D&D &D or in, like, Call of Cthulhu. Sure, Things sure. like that, where it's, like, gritty realism 
and absolute horror, and you're dealing with, uh, especially if it's the 1920s, Call of Cthulhu, you know, oh, yeah, there yeah. are different, I mean, there's a lot of racism then. Right. There's a lot of, uh, you know, things like that that can make some people uncomfortable. Sure, but sure. But it's, it's it, how how close do you want to play to the intent of the game? Yeah, you know? yeah. And I think that's, a, this is a good point. This is a, a good time to, say, set the tone for the game that you'd like to run, as well as give the, the, the players an opportunity to voice what uh, their opinions on the kind of uh, tone that they would like to play in. And that can be everything from, like, you know, we're, you know, we're playing Dark fantasy, uh, you know, Sauron has won, the, the good peoples of Middle-earth have been driven from the land and we're now refugees. And that sounds pretty dark and, and could get pretty gruesome. Uh, you know, maybe you have a player who just is, they, they want a little bit of that, but they would appreciate some levity, they would appreciate some hope, they would appreciate some variety in the kind of themes that you use to craft your, uh, your scenarios for that campaign. There's nothing wrong with a player going like, yeah, I, I like dark fantasy, but I, I really need it, uh, tempered with something else or otherwise can't do a whole year of it I'm uh, it's just too much and, and there's nothing wrong with someone saying that you know you can either say nope and and, and give them an opportunity to leave graciously uh, or you can say yeah well we'll see what we can do and and uh, check in periodically to make sure things are going uh, going well you've all agreed upon the rule the rules who is responsible for upholding that social contract mm. at the table yeah, I, I think that everybody is. If the host is someone other than the DM, then they have a certain responsibility for, for situations where you have to ask somebody to leave or honoring the, the, the rules of the house, basically, you know, take your shoes off when you come in, you know, don't feed my dog food, <laughs> you know, things like that. Don't pet the cat the wrong way or pull its tail. No. Can you please actually flush the toilet? Can you please actually flush the toilet? <laughs> don't put your cigarette butts out on the lawn. You know, there's all sorts of things like that. In that sense, it's no different than any other uh, social gathering at somebody else's house, you know, you respect the host and, mm -hmm. and, and you'll, you'll be fine. Um, yeah, but things at the table, pretty much everybody, I mean, yeah, the DM is the arbiter of the rules, but... Sure, but they're not like the, they're not the autocrat of the table. And at some point, the being the arbiter of the rules and, and being the person who's there to kind of keep the game moving for it to be interesting and exciting, you know, be the main, one of the main forces behind that, it's still up to everyone else at the table. If they see something, Mm -hmm. That's like, hey man, uh, I, I, we did, we weren't we said we weren't going to do that. Or is everything okay? It seems like you know you're you're you know you're you're having a tough day and and yeah, there's a lot of different ways that you can approach someone who is uh, breaking a part of the social contract. And you know we're all flawed and we all have bad days and we all have reactions that we wish we didn't have and we say things we wish we didn't and we behave in ways we're not proud of. And so a bit of uh, compassion for someone who's just sort of like, hey, you're getting some bad vibes from you or, or it just seems like something's, you know, you're having a rough time mm -hmm. or you're not having a good time. Saying something like that in a break or or just like, you know, as, as, as uh, you know, as the two of you get up to go get something a drink or something like that. That can be one way. Uh, I, I hesitate to like call people out. I don't. I think it's mm -hmm. counterproductive. I think it's more about the person doing the calling out than the person who is being called out. Mm -hmm. And so I, I like to sort of talk to people in, in private unless it's yeah. something that's like everybody is like, oh my God, what is going on? I remember one time we had a, a DM earlier in our careers and it was one of the few times that I was a no call, no show to a game. Ah. Uh, got caught up with the girlfriend, whatever. Sure. But I was a couple hours late when I finally called. It was like, oh, don't worry about it. We canceled the session and I gave everyone like 5,000 experience. So mm. just be here next time. Yeah. And I was like, everyone, even me? Like, no, just the people that showed up. Yeah. And to which I was like, so those other times when so and so and so and so didn't show up and you didn't do this, why is this all of a sudden now? Right, right. And yes. it, I, I think mm -hmm. it was because it was the first time that I did it, which meant something for some reason. As a player, if you had something like that where it laid down like punitive measures, uh -huh, uh -huh. but it wasn't part of the social contract initially, like how do you handle that? I mean, I think that it's it's you talk to the DM and 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 you let them know like, hey, I you know this is not just is this unfair, but it feels it feels arbitrary and it feels like I'm being singled out. Mm -hmm. And after a conversation where you're saying like, hey, I you know I, I disagree with this because not because it's like a game thing or a DM thing, but I just think I think just treating me poorly as a person. If that kind of conversation doesn't. Uh, get them to see that, that they stepped over a line. Particularly if it's like you guys hadn't agreed to anything like that. You know, you never once said like, oh yeah, if I'm not here, totally 
you know, don't count me in for free experience that everybody else is going to get just because I wasn't here. Um, I I also don't cancel games just because one person misses, you know, uh, I don't arrange my games that one person is the, is the vital link that has to be there. If after that kind of conversation, you don't, nothing changes, then you have to ask yourself, do I want to keep playing with this person? Because Mm -hmm. it's going to happen again. It's one of those things where the older I get, the more I just go like, no, I I don't, my, my free time's way too precious to spend with, uh, you know, with people who lay down arbitrary and capricious rules or punitive measures that, that, are, that come from a place of, of anger and frustration with the person. Mm-hmm. Um, no, like if you had to cancel the game, you had to cancel the game. But you know, the canceling of the game is the punishment. It's not even punishment. It's just like, you know, you don't get to play. That sucks. Why can't it just be that? <laughs> right, right, right. So I guess social contract, I mean, I guess, it, I mean, it's not a... Is it a pre? Would you consider it like a prenup with the, I, as, as with the group? <laughs> I don't know that I'd I'd call it a prenup. Uh, I, I think there's certainly some people who probably go overboard in coming up with rules and things like that. But the social contract is the beginning of a conversation about your game with the people who are playing your game. It's kind of like how Napoleon thought about cavalry. It's useful before, during, and after a battle. Communication is useful before, during, and after your game. It is always useful open yeah. honest communication and, and if you find yourself in a situation where you feel like I can't speak up I, I can't say what's on my mind or me and this other player both feel one way and doesn't look like anyone else feels that way and, and and it doesn't seem like anybody else is talking to each other about it those are warning signs that something might be going on it doesn't mean you got to flee but it does mean you need to be a little bit more uh, circumspect and a little bit more um, just you know, pay attention because it does mean that there there's unsaid things that that are that are going unsaid and are going undealt with and uh, it, it could be something as simple as you know someone just had a bad day and they weren't really open about what that was like and and their bad vibes or their sort of just nah, is kind of rubbing off on other people and after two or three sessions of that mm-hmm. and no one says anything no one takes the person aside and says like hey are you doing all right is everything okay to get to a point where at least they know that how they're behaving and the energy uh, for lack of a better word they're giving off is is uh, affecting other people like if you can't speak up if you can't, if you're sitting around a table and you can't tell someone, hey, I don't like this about the game. I don't want to participate in this part of it. I don't want this part of it featured. This is not fun for me. It's not a, a it's not something I want to explore. And, and like I said, sometimes being uncomfortable, being made to feel uncomfortable, having your boundaries crossed is, is a goal that you want for yourself in a game. Mm-hmm. But if somebody else tries to do it and you're not, you don't want that, then yeah. that's a big red flag, yeah. <laughs> you know? And if you can't say something, if you can't say, hey, I, I don't like this, I, I, I'm not having fun, I, I'm, I'm out, you might not know until it happens. Uh, I recently found out that I really don't like Sudoku in, <laughs> in my games. I did not know this about myself until it happened in a game and it was like running into a brick wall. It pulled me completely out of the experience, and I, I had trouble. Like, just I was like, "What am I?" I and I, I tried in the, the best way I could to, to let the DM know after it was over. Like, "Hey, I just I can't." It's like asking me to do my taxes in the middle of a game. I it just yeah. like is it's anti fun, but I didn't know that until it happened. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you will get into those situations. You do not know what's gonna just make you go from enthusiastic participation to when do we get to leave? Like, yeah. And it could happen on a dime, uh, and and if you're not in a group where you can say like, raise your hand, hey. Yeah, right. you have. I mean, like there's, there's uh, Scratch Academy. They have a thing that they do, uh-huh. where uh-huh. it's like you know you type this letter. If, if this is it's a I, virtual X card. Virtual X card. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. they do they do the X card thing, and like yeah. that's a that's that's a perfectly viable way to play. I mean, that way it's not you're not bringing the game to a complete halt. Right. You just raise your little card that says, I don't like this. Can we yeah. end this as soon as possible and move on, please? Yeah. And then the DM does, and you move on. Yeah, we've mentioned before. I mean, this was in uh, I think maybe our. our uh, problem DMs episode where we talked about like safety tools and things like that. This would be a place. So the social contract, the conversation about it, the open communication that you're trying to foster is the place to talk about the use of safety tools, whether it's uh, you know being explicit about what behaviors are and aren't uh, appropriate, uh, the use of lines and veils, saying like, okay, this is a, a line for me I don't want crossed. Here's other things where if you do cross that line, just draw a veil behind it. Mm-hmm. I, I, you can cross it, I just don't want to dwell on it. Yeah. I'm that way about torture. If you're going to torture my PC, that's okay. 
uh, but I'm not going to sit here and participate in, in your in, in a torture porn, basically. Right. Uh, unless it's a precursor to me, like breaking free of my bonds and, and totally overcoming my enemies with power and grace and majesty. Uh, but <laughs> but yes. I don't mind a character being uh, physically, uh, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, whatever tortured because that might be an interesting thing to play through the aftermath of, and, and to have that fuel a character and and to have it be a consequence of play. But mm-hmm. do not ask me to play it out. All you got to do is they torture the ever-loving bejesus out of you and we'll deal with the aftermath later. Yeah. Fine. I'm done. Good. But if you're like, okay, roll constitution to see how long you resist. Oh, and they're going to taunt you. and We're going to role play through this whole thing. Now I'm just like, the thumb screws, yeah, I'm just like, why are we yeah. doing, what is the point of doing this? You know, uh, but there might be people who, uh, who enjoy that experience and, and think that there's something worthwhile out of it. I made seven Saw movies. They sure as hell did. Or is it eight now? <laughs> I don't remember. It, open communication is. I, I wish I could have it just like at the automatic response for every question we get. It's just like, have you talked to some? Have you talked to the players about this? Uh, you yeah. Know, have you Have you talked to someone about it? Have you talked to your DM? Have you talked to a fellow player? Have you talked to someone uh, other other than us who don't know? You know the other people all the particulars involved. of the situation, <laughs> right. including all points of view involved. Sure, right. and and sometimes these are tricky thorny, sticky situations, uh, to use a lot of mixed metaphors, mm-hmm. and, uh, a- and, and there's no good answer. You've, yeah. you've got two people who have opposing points of view and are certain of their, uh, their correctness and do not want to budge, then you might be in a situation where one or both has to leave, and, and mm-hmm. uh, it, it would suck, and friendships sometimes get torn apart, and good times get sullied, and you don't have a game, and those things suck and we hope that they are minimal, and we hope that you yeah. don't have to put up with it for very long if you're in that situation, but my God, if you're in, in a group with someone that doesn't listen to you and, and doesn't uh, respect you, then uh, you really need to consider just bugging out and finding a group who will talk and, mm-hmm. and, and treat, each other, uh, <laughs> treat each other like humans. <laughs> yeah, because at the end of the day, it should be just as easy as don't be a dick. It should be, yes. Head on over to Patreon for our weekly podcast and so much more. WebDM is also on Twitch with three weekly games, which we upload to WebDM Plays, our second YouTube channel. I just keep losing all my mustache hairs. They just fall out, and I think I'm going to go mustache bald. Dude. You, your mustache is mighty. I know. I, I just find. Just, it's great, I mean, yeah. it, the facial hair just falls out, though. I, mean, I know. I it just. It's it's false, so you're molting. All right. Yeah, you're go. just molting. You're losing your summer your summer coat. I can't. Your I can't bring my beard oil with me on the planes. Problem. Anyway, you can't check. You don't check anything, do you? I no. I don't check anything. I, uh, I bring. A, I just won't bring one carry on. Underneath the seat is for my feet. So I just have it all down to assist. And so I, I, I could probably could. I just don't have a three ounce. You should just. Oil. You should just mail it. Yeah, next true. time, mail it next just time. mail it to me. Viking beard oil. Yeah. 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 Pillage those airports. Lustrous. Um, you ready? Yeah. It's <clears> like <throat> an otter's pelt. <laughs> God damn it! Just, <laughs> <laughs> just stroking your beard in my peripheral vision, going like an otter's pelt. <laughs> This was not established in the social contract, no, Jim. No, no. Okay. No.